Even death fails to grant an escape for some. It's all the way on the other side. <laughs> close. Not sure what they're... Guard paths are, but I need to get up <laughs> about where they are now, I think. There they go. I want to stay there for a second. Oh, they also go forwards there. That might be my opportunity to get closer. Wait, are they coming from that direction now? No, no, no. They're coming back. Oh, now they're going back up there. Okay. I swear I hear another one. I think there's more than one. Okay, I think I'm safe here. She mentioned some secret in my family, something that could change everything, bring us down forever. What could she mean? Did she know something that even I don't? Maria, widow to one of the miners, wrote me a letter. She claims to know the secret of the Hyde family and is willing to share it with me. It's supposed to change everything. At least, she believed so. She tried for years to draw the attention of the sheriff and officials, but they dismissed her, claiming she suffers from grief-related delusions. Today I'm meeting her in person. I'm hoping for a story that will allow me to bring strong charges. Jacob Hyde should be rotting in jail. Yes, my gut tells me this... Th my... Uh, this is missing a word, I think. My gut tells me that this is the case that will get my name on the headlines. A tormented widow, a uh, Vanal? I don't know what that word means. A Vanal sheriff. A greedy mine owner that goes as far as committing a crime. I've waited my whole life for a chance like this. Number 17. It's almost easier just to remember it as XVII. My father was very upset when he learned that his associate was among the casualties. Some even suggested that he had wanted to get rid of the man, and now he finally got his way. Friday, October 25th, 1850. Four dead in the mine explosion. New facts have surfaced regarding the accident we had covered in the previous issue of our paper. The victims of the explosion at the Carolyn Mine, Blackstone, New Hampshire, include not only the three miners mentioned previously, 
but also the co-owner of the Enterprise, George Whitehead. Jacob Hyde, the other owner, refused to speak to journalists. He only issued a short statement in which he offered his condolences to the victims' families. Holy shit, how am I alive? Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> oh, good. It saved after I got the pieces of paper. Whew. Oh, thank God I can go in here. Okay, which one was it again? XVII. It's literally easier for me to remember it that way. That's XV. Whoa. XVII is. Oh, it's like the other way. Fuck. It's kind of back where I came from. Shit. I'm gonna go this way, maybe. No, wait, that's where I just was. Coming this way. Oh my god. Oh, come on! These sneaking mechanics are not my favorite. <laughs> there's no in-between, there's no, they're sort of alerted, there's really nothing interesting going on. It's either you're fine or they instantly see you and you're fucked. I know you can kind of run, but still. I'm just gonna run. If they see me, that's fine. It's this one. I know it's this one, right? This, this one too? Yeah, it's this one. Next one, XIII. That's where the beginning was originally. Take a different route. Yeah. Right? Here? No. Here. Hmm.
Whoa, what the hell? Why'd you just appear out of nowhere? Hi. Hmm. Next one is XIV. Right there. You know there. That place. Am I close? Sorta. Yeah, they're going in a circle, okay. XIV, yes! Small men definitely don't exist. Madeline? She wasn't one of the accident victims. Someone must have murdered her later and hid the body here. Madeline... Madeline Lindrix. Looks like a ruthless execution. The arrow went through the spine. It feels so inappropriate that I've come upon a murder victim and I just like rip the arrow out of their neck and then just toss it on the ground like poof. It feels disrespectful. I wish I could put it down or something. Not put it back where it came from, I guess, but just put it down without having to throw it. Ah, we can have some minecart stuff. This is going to be fun. Oh, I love the way that moves around the gear. Hmm. Oh, that is so cool! It's under tension, and then you release it and it goes back. I mean, can I just leave it halfway? That allows me to get through, but maybe not the cart?
I think you're supposed to do that in stages, but I just open them almost perfectly to the same level, I guess, and it's just good enough. Oh, this is going to be so fun. I love minecart rides. Do I need to switch this back? Now it's ready to go, I think. I guess it'll smash through that. And then on the other side, I can just continue walking? It's gonna be a short minecart ride. <laughs> Here we go! Oh, I'm not even riding in it. Right, I'm just pushing it down. Much safer, but less fun. Thanks, friend. be dead. Defeat Gilman. Oh god, this is a boss fight. Oh, they look cool. I have to run. If he so much as touches me, I'll freeze to death. Sorry, they just look really cool. <laughs> nope. I'm... Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you see anything happen in particular? Just fade to black, you're dead. I mean, this is only the first part, though. Like, if I manage to close this, that's not going to defeat them. It said defeat them, not escape from them. Wait, where did it? Oh, this way. I have to run. If he so much as touches me, I'll freeze to death. Definitely still didn't defeat them.
to crouch behind the metal sheets to take cover from the ice. I need to be careful. I knew that those blasts could freeze me to death. Him there, all be over. Oh, I, I see. My search for the intruder has suddenly turned into a nightmare. Emma claims that I was lost in the woods for six hours. To make matters worse, someone broke into my office and stole the telegrams. While following the thief, I ended up facing the terrible truth. We've been watched for a long time. The Soviets. They know everything. Every detail. This whole thing is getting more and more complicated. I'm starting to think that Nicholas did not in fact lose his mind. He too was stalked by... someone with his every step. Where... Where am I? Oh! Fuck! Who could have... This is... the bottom of some fucking well. How do I get out? How the hell did we get down here? That is the sheriff.
fuck the plank is gonna break. as soon as possible. Ah, oh, we're near the cabin. Very close to the cabin. Return to the house. Emma's alone at home. I must get back to her as fast as I can. left my wife alone and there's a maniac on the prowl. I just hope she's all right. I think I have the sheriff's keys okay, now. Later. Emma's more important right now. I want to read that note, though. Are you sure it's more important? Okay. Emma! Where is she? fell into a stream. I'm all right. He's come back. You hear me? He keeps harassing us. The phone doesn't work. Maybe he cut the wires or... The important thing is he didn't do anything to you. But he could have. Look what I found. God. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have left you alone. Did you meet the sheriff? He, uh, no, I must have missed him. I found the telegrams, though. And believe it or not, the diary I told you about? Diary? Nicholas's diary. It'll help me decode them. I just need to find remaining pages and then... You're doing it again! Someone wants to kill us, and all you're worried about is work? Why don't you think about me? About our child? I do think, all the time. Then do something to keep us safe, and do it fast. It'll be over soon. I promise. Emma's on edge. 
She needs to calm down. I better check what the sheriff was up to. Luckily, I've got his car keys. On edge. Yeah. I wonder why they would be on edge. Adam is such a shit. Police report. Case number da, 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 August 28th, 1979. Officer P.T. Anderson. Plaintiff's name Emma Stevenson. Incident second degree burglary. Incident details. On Tuesday, August 28th at 4.12 p.m., the police station in Wyndham received a phone call concerning a supposed second degree burglary on a private property in Blackstone. The caller, who said her name was Emma Stevenson, claimed that while her husband was away, an unidentified trespasser entered the property and punctured the tires of Mr. and Mrs. Stevenson's car. Actions taken. I arrived at the spot at 5.03 p.m. Upon preliminary examination, I can confirm with absolute certainty that the tires of Mr. and Mrs. Stevenson's car were indeed punctured with a sharp tool. Footprints left in the mud indicate a man. I will talk to the owner, and then, after further examination, I will try to put down my conclusions in a summary. Wait a minute, hold on. I think there- I said rotate to find hidden message. Ah, yes. Additional comments. The house that Mr. and Mrs. Stevenson now live in has a very eventful history. In the 1950s, there was an accident in the nearby mine, and at least a few people went missing in the immediate area. When a body of one of the missing people was found, accusations were made against a certain Jacob Hyde, the mine's co-owner, who happened to live in the very same house. It wasn't until years later that other bodies were found, which is why the area has become shrouded in dark legends. The murderer was never apprehended. Where did he get that from? An uncle from the KGB? Why would someone keep something like this? Was it even a real officer or just some dummy sheriff? What's this? In the late 19th century, the Hyde family, in order to avoid further association with the accusations against Jacob Hyde, legally changed their name to Stevenson. What? What the fuck? Am I supposed to believe that my family and the Hydes are one and the same? That's fucking absurd. So someone would have told me if we had such stories in our family history, wouldn't they? Unless. Unless it's bullshit. Bullshit invented by the sheriff. He wanted to set me up, mess with my head. W was he even a real sheriff? Oh, fuck, I seriously can't put my finger on this. Sheriff's report. Uh, September 11th, 1854. Reporting officer Daniel Plainview. Informant's name Charles Grady. Time of uh, incident, September 11th, 19, uh, 1854, Blackstone. Incident murder, incident details. On Saturday, September 11th at night, the sheriff's office in Wyndham received a notice from the Hillside Inn janitor, Charles Grady, concerning a badly wounded man who had arrived at the inn. Upon arrival, the deputy sheriff, the undersigned Daniel Plainview, pronounced the man dead. The victim turned out to be John Norton, who had been missing for two weeks. Death was caused by blood loss. The man had been stabbed in the neck with a sharp tool, possibly a knife, which caused arterial injury. He also had multiple cuts and lacerations on his body, as well as burns, some of them partially healed. In the course of investigation at the scene, it had been established that the man had reached Hillside Inn, going along the road through the woods from the estate on the other side of the river that belongs to Jacob Hyde, the owner of both the inn and the mine. However, the suspect was not at home, though there were signs that he had left in a hurry. And then this is a little, like, cut out from an article in a newspaper. 
The Real Secrets of Blackstone Crime. In the late 19th century, the Hyde family in our... Oh, yeah, that's just the legally changed their name to Stevenson. Additional comments. While searching the Hyde family estate, the sheriff and the deputy found a hidden room located directly above the office. Inside, in the dark, there was Jacob's teenage son, Nicholas Hyde, cowering on the floor. They were unable to communicate with him. The boy does not react to any stimuli. Perhaps he has fallen into a stupor as a result of abuse from his father. Young Hyde has been placed in the care of psychiatrists who will decide on his further treatment. The sheriff has issued an arrest warrant for the fugitive Jacob Hyde with a bounty of $500. So accounting for inflation, 500 USD around the 1850s, uh, today is worth about 14,000 USD. So the police suspected Jacob Hyde of killing John Norton, and then Jacob's son, Nicholas, was put into mental treatment. He mentioned being 10 years away from home in his diary, so it seems he spent that time in a mental hospital. Through those documents. Maybe I'll learn something more. It seems familiar, but I can't recall where exactly I've seen it before. Definitely somewhere in our house. Oh, I remember it very well. I figured that's definitely going to be a clue. And it looks like it's connected to those things around the fireplace that were glowing on the... Uh, what is my magic tool called? What the hell is it called? Quant Quantum localizer. Another secret. A hidden room in our house. I have to check it out. That fucker could have even been there when we moved in. Too bad I didn't know about it before. Now this I can it. mess with it. I just need to place the disc in the opening, just like in the picture. Note found in locker. What happens at night will be judged in daylight. What stays hidden in the dark will be revealed in full light. Part of this text is invisible. How can I read it? So this is one of those like heat activated messages, I think. There we go. 1864, AD. 1860, 64, here. That number sequence isn't random. Yeah, that is 1864. be the correct letter here. Oh, AD. AD? Uh, so here's uh, A equals D. I forgot which direction this goes in. There's one direction of AD. No, so let's do the other one. A to D. Hmm, I'm missing something. There we go. Yeah, just until it everything says 1864 at the very top and then AD. Oh, you can still rotate it after the fact. Looks like a set of dates. Each corresponds to one letter. Okay, this puzzle took me an outrageously long time to solve, but I think I finally figured it out. At least my method seems to have worked for the first two letters that I need, so I'm going to assume that it's going to work for the others. So, the solution is to rotate the outer ring for... <laughs> I, I don't know what the hell the point of this thing being here is. It's it's a complete distraction. This has nothing to do with anything. You can completely ignore that. Also, the numbers that we're going to find don't have to be aligned underneath this thing or at the top or anything like that, like it was for 1964 AD. 
Yeah, just completely forget that. I've already solved the first two, so let's do the third. So the third date is 1410. So forget about aligning that at the top. That has nothing to do with it. 1410 and the letter associated with it is N. So I'm going to move 1410 until it's aligned with the N on the inner ring. So this is 1410. Move it down here so it's aligned with the N on the inner ring. And then whatever that translates to, O, is the next letter. And yes, that just, I'm looking at a list of possible letters for the third uh, part of the password that I need. And O is one of the possible things. So looks like this is working. The first three letters spell ego. Next one is 1307D. 13, oh, 1307D. 1307D equals I. I'm just going to assume that that is a correct answer, even though I didn't write down the possible combinations for those. Let's just test it. There should be an I. Yes, there is. 1791T. 1791. Oh, oh there's T. 1791T turns into S. Nine hundred and sixty-six I M. That spells egoism. Bingo. That was well thought out, Nicholas. Globus Cruciger. This isn't just some trinket. It looks like it could fit somewhere. No, I'll just put the apple in the right place. Oh, 